Hello my YouTube family, Dee here, and something has been bothering me. I've had a dream uh, since April 13th that has been rifling in my spirit. When I first had the dream, I told myself I wasn't going to share the dream. I was just going to keep praying about it. But something keep pulling me to share this dream with you guys. Um, first of all, in the past, I have had many dreams that have come true. Some I understood and some I didn't understand until after it came true. Um, and some still hanging in the loop um, that could possibly be coming true in the future. I don't claim to be some prophet or a prophetic dreamer or anything of that nature. But I do know I have had dreams to come true on down to the minute detail. I mean, medical details and stuff like that that I wouldn't otherwise know. That's how I know the dream was divine. Um, this dream here, though, has more to do with politics, I believe. Is has a lot of symb symbolic things in it. Instead of and that's another thing some dreams have lots of symbolic things in it other dreams is just straight out what it is uh, this dream to me is more symbolic and also if I look at it closely it seems to symbolize some evil things and some good things and I'm going to share the dream with you and maybe you can understand the dream better than I did who knows there may be some people out there that's of God um, that have the gift of interpretation. However, um, I refuse to seek a psychic or a pagan person because I know where they get their information from. They get their information from the demons. And that's not the route I'm taking. However, uh, I just want to share the dream with you because it troubled me so bad. I feel like I need to warn or just share the dream and look for the warning in the future. When I dreamed the dream, I, I, I woke up feeling much like I feel during those other dreams that have come true. Let me just tell you how the dream was. And it makes no sense at first, but then when you start to thinking about the symbols in the dream, it makes sense to me in a political sense and spiritual sense as well. The dream started off with me, two of my sisters, and two of my nieces. Um, the rest of the family was not in the dream, but we were walking in a cage-like maze. It almost seemed like it was some attraction or a zoo-like thing. We were, it was a huge cage. It was huge, big, like uh, humans you know, can walk around in the cage. And the cage had many areas where you can get lost at and different things like that. It was like a maze, but it was a cage that cut off in certain areas, you know, gates open in other areas and all that kind of stuff. Well, some kind of way we were walking and, you know, just walking along. We didn't even, I don't even recall us seeing any animals until I spotted this big black lion. We were walking and I look to the left and I say, oh, y'all, look, look at that big black lion, you know, like that. And to describe the lion, it was all black. It was huge. It was shiny, shiny coat, um, coat like a, a panther or something. It uh, looked it really, really scary. Matter of fact, as I was showing it, pointing to it and showing them, oh, look, the lion, it was coming to us in a slow, prey-like, you know, motion. It was walking real slow, but looking like it was in attack mode, hunching and walking, you know, very slow. But I noticed, even though it was walking to waters, we were standing up there talking about it. It never got close to the point where we was, you know, to the cage part of the cage where we were it was walking in that direction but for some reason it never came close to us 
And so when we noticed that, when my other sisters started noticing it, they got scared. Just like I was kind of, not frightened, but I guess you knew like, oh, this is not right. You know, this was evil. It just seemed evil. And we looked at each other and was like, oh, y'all, we got to get out of here. So we noticed like straight ahead, there was a gate that was open. So we went through that gate and locked the gate behind us, or well, closed the gate behind us. Uh, to the fashion of almost locking it. And my sister say, well, where is those children? You know, because the two nieces were gone. We noticed they weren't there. And as she say, where is those children? We heard knocks, knock, 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 you know, like something knocking on a glass. So we look up because it that's where the noise sound like it was coming from. And when we look up, we saw our two nieces looking out of a window telling us to come up. So... We're still in this cage, but we entered another part of the cage that had like some stairs that go up to a tent, which was where we saw my niece Nim. So we proceeded up the stairs and we locked that gate behind us too because there was a gate before you enter the stairs. We closed that gate too because we didn't know if the lion was loose and was coming, you know, around the area we were. So we locked the gate and we went up the stairs and we met up with the two nieces and we told them, oh, there's a great big lion out there. You know, he's all black. You know, we was explaining about the lion. And as we was talking to them about the lion, we heard horses outside. You know, the horse noise that the horses make. And so my sister say, oh, my God, there's horses out there. You know, I can't remember us looking out the window, but I do remember the next thing. We were on the back of those horses. I especially remember myself being on the back of a horse and the horseman was clothed in armor, you know, metal armor. The horse itself, I looked down, I could recall holding on to the, the, the knight and looking down and the horseman, the horse itself was brown. It wasn't a white horse or any sort of type of thing like that. It was a brown horse. But it was, you know, it had night armor on it almost, like, especially the top. I could only see the legs and tell that the legs were brown. However, the night that I was holding on to, I was trying to see the face, but I could not. That part was cut off. All I can see, I don't mean the head was cut off. He had his head and everything intact. It's just that my memory, I could only see from the shoulder down. Uh, and I could recall a feeling of calmness, a feeling of protection, a feeling of uh, just like he was whisking us away from the danger that was coming. And I only saw myself on the horse, but I could hear in the background as the horse was trotting out of the cage. You can tell the horseman came to save us because it was leaving out of that cage. As we were leaving out of the cage, I noticed there were other animals in that cage too. We passed by areas where there were cows, looked like mutated, ugly looking cows, uh, and other animals that I don't even recognize. But we were coming out of the dream, I mean coming out of the cage, and as we were going out of the cage, there was a field with tall, tall grass. It almost seemed like if anybody's familiar with sugar cane or that kind of grass, corn grass. Um, we went through that pasture and I could hear other horses behind me and I only assumed that the rest of my family that was with me was on those horses, you know, the, there were knights that had them on their horses too. But for some reason, I never turned around. For some reason, I don't know why I didn't turn around in a dream. I just assumed it was them just like me being on the horse that I was they were on horses too it almost felt like I knew that it was them and so all the horses were trotting I was on the horse that was leading I was with the man that was leading the other horses and I was holding on tightly and I could recall us going through a field and then all of a sudden uh, some kind of way the horses stopped a little bit and made a turn when the horses stopped and made a turn, it's almost like they were coming out of the field. But when it made the turn, that's when I woke up. 
I don't know where we went from the field, but I do know that it felt safe. I do know that it felt like these horses or horsemen carried us out of danger. Uh, because after I woke up out of the dream, I wanted so badly to know what this dream meant. So, so bad, especially since we're living in the last days. I um, decided, the first thing came to my mind is, oh, go to the dream site. But then, you know, my Holy Spirit came in and said, no, don't you go there. You will be seeking divination if you go there. So what I did was I went to a search site, you know, like Google or whatever. This site was called Bing. And I just typed in black lion because I wanted to see, if I went, matter of fact, I went to the images and typed in black lion because I wanted to see if I would see a lion that represent the lion that I saw in the dream. Lo and behold, when I typed in black lion and went to images, the very first lion on the page, the very first lion on the page is the exact lion that I saw in the dream. Now, I knew the lion in the dream was something bad because it was all in black. At least that's what I associated it with, something bad. That's the feeling I got in the dream. So, <clears throat> I look up black lion, like I said, and I saw the image of the thing. And on the title of the image, it says, The Black Lion Avatar of... It's spelled N-Y-A-R... L-A-T-H-O-T-E-P. I don't know how to pronounce that word. But anyway, that's what the title of the picture said. Now, the line on the picture, it was an avatar. It wasn't the real thing, but it came very close to what I saw. The thing I saw in the dream was real. It wasn't in avatar form. It was the actual creature. And so I look up the word that associates with the picture which is the N-Y-A-R-L-A-T-H-O-T-E-P word. And I can't remember it by heart, so I'm pulling it up on my computer. But uh, in a nutshell, it says that this particular creature, the N-Y-A-R-L-A-T-H-O-T-E-P, is also known as the crawling chaos. And it goes on to talk about he was a fictional character in some kind of book that H.P. Lovecraft wrote, whoever that is. It also talks about in the 1920s, uh, he wrote a prose poem of the same name, and he was later mentioned in other works by Lovecraft. Uh, I don't know who Lovecraft is, but I'm sure he's probably some kind of person who know about things that's of the dark nature, I'm sure that's who that is because he later described uh, this creature as one of the outer gods and so it seems this is some sort of mythological creature that resembles some kind of uh, Egyptian pharaoh and you can check it out for yourself I went to Wikipedia which is an online encyclopedia and you can see all this information that I'm telling you in the encyclopedia, it also says that he's sometimes described as a tall, swampy man resembling an ancient Egyptian pharaoh. Um, so apparently, this thing takes many shapes. Sometimes it comes in the form of a lion. Sometimes it comes in the form of a swampy man. At least that's what I was reading in this encyclopedia. And it even goes on. It says something about, in the story at least, that the man wrote, he wanders, this creature wanders the earth, seemingly gathering legions of followers, and the narrator of the story among them through the demonstration of strange and seemingly magical instruments. That's what this encyclopedia talks about um, the story that H.P. Lovecraft wrote about this particular creature. It also goes on to say that the deity is noted for its Egyptian suffix which is H-O-T-E-P. And lastly, it mentions that in H.P. Lovecraft's stories, uh, the reader also gets an impression of the world's collapse. Maybe in some way, this creature is a symbolic of the world's collapsing um, as far as the world system and how it's ran. Uh, this New World Order thing, with all this coming up, I can't help but... Uh, think that it might correlates with that. Um, I don't know because I'm not an interpreter, 
But anyway, I just thought I'd pitch that out there. Apparently, this is a real type of deity or whatever. So apparently I dreamed of some deity. And my dream has some kind of symbolic meaning. But I have no clue. The only thing I could come up with is chaos is coming. And before chaos hit, the Lord will take care of me and my family uh, or make sure that we are out of the way of chaos. Uh, that's what I get from the dream. Now, I'm sure everybody out there may get a whole different interpretation. It may be some, even some that can read more into the dream. But if it's not coming from Christ, I choose not to take part in it. I, I rather not even hear it. Um, and those of you out there that's in Christ and you have, you understand the dream uh, or in Yeshia, which is the Hebrew name, um, please feel free to share because I am very, not troubled by the dream, but I was stirred up by it quite a bit. And I know it's a warning and I know it's telling me of something to come. At least that's what I feel. Uh, so anyway, yeah, you can check it out for yourself. It's, it has to do with some kind of ancient Egypt deity and stuff of that nature. As far as the knights that helped us, I was not able to gather much research about them. I'm sure there were all types of knights back in the day, um, the evil ones and the good ones, but hopefully it was good knights that whisked us away. At least it felt like good knights. And... I will just continue to pray about the dream and hope that the Heavenly Father continue to, you know, put his blessings and protection on me and my family. And I also ask that you guys continue to pray the same. And that's about all. I just want to share this dream with you. I do understand that dreams sometimes, like I said, come from the other uh, source you know it don't always come from God but uh, whenever they come true you know it comes from God Ahaya the greatest God there is in this world so that's it guys um just wanted to share a dream um I am continuing to pray about the dream you know if it is meant for me to find out what it means before it happens please be encouraged to leave comments you know if you can shed some light on this dream and in the meantime peace and blessings